What's up, YouTube? Once again, you're in the kitchen with Paul. And today, we're going to do an American classic, an all-American meatloaf. So stay tuned, and we're going to get this meatloaf popping. All right. Okay, YouTube, I am far from a culinary chef. But one thing that you need in the kitchen is you need one sharp knife, at least one sharp knife. So what we're gonna do for our onions, we're gonna cut it in the middle there, we're gonna cut it here, cut it here, and cut it here. Then we're gonna keep the bottom, the top of the knife, the tip, on the table. And we're gonna slide that onion through as we come down. You make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way. Take your time because you don't want to have an accident in the kitchen. And cut yourself. Now, once you get to the end of that onion, flip it over. And cut it. And cut it. All right, and that's what you have left. Once again, cut it through the, the middle there, and you're going to dice it into four pieces with three cuts there. Keep the tip on the table, and you're going to just come through with the knife, keeping that tip on the table, and come down just like you're using a paper cutter. As it gets down to the end, the onion's going to start to spread out a little bit. That means it's time to flip it on its edge and cut it there. See that? If you want your onion a little bit smaller than that, put it all in the pile. Once again, keeping that tip on the table, just go through there. And as long as you got that tip on the table, you're not gonna, hopefully you're not going to cut yourself. But you take your time. You want the onion pieces to be small enough so that you're not eating hunks of onion when you get your slice of meatloaf. Okay? I'm going to finish cutting up these onions and we'll be back. Okay, YouTube. These are the ingredients that I am going to be adding to my meatloaf. The first thing that we have we don't have breadcrumbs. We have actual pieces of bread, okay? We cut up the bread into small pieces, okay? And that's gonna substitute for the breadcrumbs. And what we do with this is we're gonna add a cup of milk to these breadcrumbs. And this milk is gonna moisten those breadcrumbs and it's gonna keep our meatloaf nice and moist. We're gonna have some Italian seasoning that we're gonna put in there. We have fresh cilantro. We have minced mushrooms. These are white mushrooms that I minced up. We have garlic, fresh garlic, about eight cloves of garlic that I minced up. And those onions, about a cup of onions that I chopped up. Okay. Of course, salt and pepper. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to put all of these ingredients in a huge bowl. What we want to do is we want to put our wet ingredients in first and then we put our dry ingredients in. So we're going to pour that milk in with the breadcrumbs and we're going to allow that to soak. Okay. And take those breadcrumbs and make sure that they all have enough milk on them. And it looks like we're going to need some more milk. Stand by. Okay, what we cut up, we cut up about eight slices of bread. And that eight slices of bread soaked up a lot of that liquid. So now we put an extra cup of milk in there. You see how it's getting to a consistency that's like goopy? That's a new word that I just made up, goopy. But we're going to sit this to the side and allow that milk to soak into all of these pieces of bread. And that 
is our secret ingredient that keeps this meatloaf nice and tender. So we're gonna take this and set it off to the side. Okay, as you can see, we have our onions cooking. And our onions, you want to cook until they're translucent. What does translucent mean? Translucent means that your onions go from a solid white color to almost being able to see through them. They get like a clear tinge to them. And we've taken salt and pepper, we've added it to the onions that are cooking inside of the olive oil. And once those get translucent, we're gonna come back and we start adding more ingredients. Okay, as you can see, our onions are starting to cook down. People say, well, Paul, Chef Paul, if you're gonna put those inside of the meatloaf, why don't you just let them cook in the meatloaf? Well, they're not gonna cook to the consistency that you want. They're not gonna cook down enough and they're not gonna be that soft, translucent. You don't want the onions to overpower the meatloaf. And as you can see, I just added in our chopped up mushrooms. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna release all of the water that they have and the mushrooms retain a lot of water. And as they cook down, I'm gonna add our fresh cilantro. Oh, that's nice. The smell of that cilantro, that's really nice. And as this cooks down, the cilantro is also gonna release some water. So we want this to continue to cook. And the last of our ingredients going to put into this pan is our minced garlic. We put the garlic in last because we don't want the garlic to burn. So we put our garlic in. We continue to stir this around in the, in the pan. I wish you could smell this. It smells incredible. And this is going to go into our meatloaf. Now as our onions and cilantro and garlic is cooling down, what I'm doing here is the fun part. I'm getting my hand inside of these breadcrumbs and this milk and I want to squeeze it. You see that? You keep squeezing it and make sure that it becomes mushy. Okay, you don't want any big lumps of bread inside your meatloaf. I think that's why a lot of people use breadcrumbs, but breadcrumbs don't give you that milky, creamy consistency that soft bread does. One thing that we forgot to add to our onions was our Italian seasoning. So as it's cooling, we're gonna sprinkle our Italian seasoning which is no more than thyme and basil and all those good Italian seasonings that go inside of uh, your foods. Okay, so now into our bowl goes our bread mix. We want all the wet ingredients to go in. Our onions and our cilantro with garlic and mushroom that all goes in and one more thing I forgot you know it's crazy as you're doing these these recipes and trying to remember it one more thing I forgot you need something to hold this meatloaf together so we got two lightly beaten eggs there we go we add that into our mixture. And you wanna mix this up thoroughly. Okay, YouTube, 
as we continue on with the recipe, I begin to remember things that I forgot. One of the things was some Dijon mustard, just to put a little tang in there. And also, Worcestershire sauce. And that'll put some tang in it. Now I went downstairs and I found some turkey. So we're gonna add some turkey to our meatloaf. And of course, we have to put in our triple play of seasonings. And I believe that we have remembered everything that we have forgotten. And once I get the granulated garlic, granulated onion, and seasoned salt all mixed in, we'll be able to construct this Ah, oh, yeah, that's much better. We got a much better consistency now. Now, you don't want to overmix this because what happens is there's no air in it and it gets dense. And you don't want it to get dense. Okay. Mix it up, mix it up, mix it up. Not too much. That should be enough. And you take your pan. What you want to do with your pan is you want to spray your pan with some Pam. Make sure you got nothing sticking. And you take your pan and you shape your meat into a loaf. Thus the name, Meat Loaf. There you go. Now we're starting to look like something here. You preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you're gonna cook your meatloaf in the oven for about an hour, approximately an hour, or until you get up to an internal temperature of 300, 300, 160 degrees. If it goes to 300, you're in trouble. You got a meat puck. All right. That's how it's looking. And once that oven gets up to 350, we're going to put that in the oven. Let me wash my hands. Always important to wash your hands. Also, always important to clean up as you mess up. The, the more that you clean up during the process, the less you have to clean up after the process is completely over with. So now we're going to take our meatloaf and we're going to put it inside of our oven. And from here, we can start cleaning up. The final thing that we have to do is we have to make the glaze that's going to go on top of the meatloaf. What I have here is I have brown sugar. To that brown sugar, we're going to put tomato paste. Okay. What I did was I took a lot of the paste out of the can and put a little water in there so I can get the rest of the paste out of that can. I'm going to add a little Worcestershire. Ketchup. 
ketchup also has a lot of sugar in it. That's why you want the paste in there, because you want the paste to soak up the acid, the acidity in the paste to take away that ketchup and that brown sugar flavoring. Now I don't want it to be too sweet so I didn't put any more brown sugar in there. But of course we have to taste it. Once it's all mixed up and incorporated. That's good. And this sauce will go on our meatloaf about 45 minutes in when it's about 140 degrees and then that will bake with the meatloaf until it's 160 degrees which will be about another 15 minutes after that we'll be back okay time to check on our meatloaf we're gonna see how we're doing here looking pretty good Looking pretty good. And we're gonna put the meat thermometer in. Wow, we're already done. It's already done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sauce on. Spread the sauce. We'll put this back into the oven. And we just took the meatloaf out of the oven. As you can see, it looks fantastic. What we're doing right now is we're gonna let it set. We're gonna let it just uh, rest for about 20 minutes. And after it has rested and the juices have all flown back into the meat, we'll be able to taste it. We'll be back. Okay, YouTube family, that's it. That is my meatloaf recipe. And if you enjoyed this recipe and you want to try it out, please feel free to do so. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know how it turned out. And of course, please subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, hit that bell. That bell will let you know. Every time I put up a new recipe, it's going to notify you. So please, please, please. Leave me a comment, let me know how you're doing, and tell a friend about being in the kitchen with Paul. Once again, always, always, always keep God first in your life. Love your family, and of course, love yourself. I'm Paul. Peace, y'all.